Do it now! Blow up the bridge! Kyvis screamed as they tried their best to defend themselves from the giant half-train, half-spider that was on top of them. They rolled this way and that, trying to avoid the train's huge legs as it slammed them down, each strike sending bolts of red, demonic energy scattering through the air. The other archivist watched from just beyond the bridge, too injured to help their friend. Press the button! There's no time! The injured archivist took out the detonator for the explosives placed around the bridge. They knew that once they pressed the button, the bridge would blow up, sending Choo Choo Charles plummeting below to his death, along with their friend. They watched as the battle continued to rage on the bridge, the archivists trying their best to fight back against the powerful spider train. As they dodged attacks, they called out to their archivist friend once again, Please, press the button! For me! With a flash of red lightning, Choo Choo Charles teleported behind the archivist on the bridge and picked them up with one of his powerful arms. The archivist looked into the distorted, smiling face on the front of Charles's train, and the archivist began to laugh. Choo Choo Charles looked confused. What could possibly be funny? That's when Charles saw the archivist on the far side of the bridge and the detonator they were holding in their hand. The archivist pressed the giant red button on the detonator to trigger the explosives, and one by one, they began to go off. Choo Choo Charles casually tossed the archivist off the side of the bridge and began to move away from the explosions, using his teleportation ability to jump forward as quickly as he could. But Choo Choo Charles wasn't fast enough. The explosions caught up to him, and the bridge fell away beneath him. The demon spider train felt the solid ground disappear beneath him and fell down into the deep ravine, hitting the jagged rocks below with a loud crash. The surviving archivist stood at the edge of the ruined bridge, looking down at the dead monster. They were the only survivor. But they had done it. They had beaten Choo Choo Charles. It was all over. Or was it? As the archivist walked away from the site of the battle, now concerned with how they'd get off the island, they had no idea that deep below the ground, hidden in the caverns that formed a maze beneath the island's surface, something was stirring. It was an egg, a strange, glowing egg. It shook slightly as a crack began to form on its surface. But this cavern didn't contain just one egg. There were many, many more just like it, and they were all beginning to hatch. The archivist who blew up the bridge may have taken out Choo Choo Charles, but they had a bigger problem now. How would they get off this cursed island? The archivist remembered that there was a building near the docks that contained a radio. Maybe they could use that to contact someone on the mainland. The archivist reached the building adjacent to the dock and went inside. They were relieved to find that they were right. There was a radio inside, and it worked. Mayday! Mayday! I need help sent right away! SOS! SOS! Is anyone out there? There was a giant spider train thing. It's down in the bottom of a ravine now, but... Well, I'll explain later. Just send help. Hello? Anyone? But there was no answer. The lights inside the building then suddenly cut out. The radio was no longer working either. The power was out. The archivist went outside the building and looked around. They spotted a wire on the side of the building hanging loose. It was the power line, and it had been cut. They then saw something skitter away around the side of the building. The archivist followed and jumped back in surprise. Clinging to the side of the building was Choo Choo Charles. Well, not Choo Choo Charles exactly, but a perfect copy of the spider train, just smaller, roughly the size of a small dog. The archivist thought it might be cute if they didn't know how deadly its larger predecessor had been. The baby version was about to prove that it could be just as dangerous too though, and without warning, leapt off the side of the building towards the archivist. It scratched at them with its thin metal claws, tearing at the archivist like a wild animal. The archivist grabbed the baby Choo Choo Charles and managed to pry it off. They threw the creature into the wall as hard as they could. The spider train appeared stunned for a moment, before standing up and rushing at the archivist once again. The archivist, unarmed and with no way to defend themselves, was forced to flee, running away from the building as fast as they could. As the archivist ran, they looked back to see that the baby Choo Choo Charles was still chasing them, and soon the spider was joined by two of its brethren. The three spiders chased after the archivist, the small razor-sharp teeth that filled their mouths gleaming in the moonlight. The archivist spotted a collection of cabins in the distance. These were where the island's inhabitants had once lived. They wouldn't provide much in the way of protection, but the archivist didn't have many options so they ran towards them. The archivist ran up to the closest cabin and tried the door. Locked. They ran to the next one. It was also barred shut. 
They looked back to see that the three little spider trains had nearly reached the cabins too. The archivist ran to the third cabin and pushed on the door. Success! The door swung open and they ran inside, slamming and locking the door shut behind them just moments before the baby choo-choos arrived and began scratching at the door. They quickly scanned the room looking for some kind of weapon, anything at all they could use to defend themselves. The cabin was nearly empty, just an old wood burning stove and a simple bed, but there in the corner was a shovel. It was better than nothing, it would have to do. As they reached to pick up the shovel, they heard a noise that sounded like metal scraping against metal, followed by a loud bang. It was coming from the stove. The door to the stove burst open and a small spider train came flying out. The archivist screamed and swung the shovel like a bat, knocking the baby Charles through the air. It hit the wall and slid down to the ground where it stayed motionless. Was it actually dead? No, the spider train woke and began to stand up on its shaky legs. Once it had its balance back, it attacked again. The archivist tried to keep it at a distance with the shovel, but the sound of glass breaking caused them to turn where they saw the other two crawling inside. No, not just two, three, no, four, no, even more. How many of these things were there? The archivist was about to get an answer to their question. They fled outside, and they could see that there weren't just a few of these baby choo-choo Charles. There were dozens, and they were all coming for the archivist. The archivist threw down the heavy shovel and ran. They had to find somewhere safe. Meanwhile, on a Coast Guard ship not far from the island, the captain was standing on the bridge, wistfully staring out at the large moon hanging over the sea, when their communication officer burst in. Sir, I've just received a really strange message. The officer went on to explain that they had heard a radio broadcast sent out over a public channel. The signal was weak and cut off midway through, but it sounded like there had been an accident on a nearby island. Something about a train wreck? The captain was aware of only one island nearby that might have a train, the island of Araniram. The captain wouldn't delay, they'd go there straight away and see if there was anything they could do to help. The captain was right. Back on Araniram, there had been a train wreck. The original fully grown Choo Choo Charles still lay where he had fallen, down among the debris from the blown up bridge. He was dead, but he wasn't alone. One of his children, a spider train that was identical to him in every way except for its size, had arrived. Soon, many more appeared. They had been searching for Choo Choo Charles and began to encircle him. As the babies appeared to mourn their lost parent, one of them broke out of the circle and crawled up onto the original Choo Choo Charles. It stood on top of the engine and something started to happen. Streaks of red energy appeared on the body of Choo Choo Charles. The energy began to flow up and into the smaller one, filling it with the same red, demonic energy that had once coursed through the larger train. The smaller spider train began to glow brighter and brighter as more and more of the energy was pulled into it. The others watched as their siblings kept absorbing energy, emitting a piercing scream before starting to grow in size. The archivist ran through the forest, but stopped as they heard the loud shriek echo across the island. They didn't know what it meant, but they knew it couldn't be good. There was no time to think about it though, because another of the spider trains had dropped out of the trees and landed on the archivist. They managed to grab it by one of its legs and toss it away, but soon, more and more of them were dropping out of the trees. They had to keep running. They weren't out of the woods yet, and maybe they never would be. The archivist burst from the trees, still being swarmed by spider trains. There were so many of them, and they were everywhere. The spiders were moving fast. The archivist had no time to stop and think, or even catch a breath. The only way to go was straight ahead, towards a cave in the mountainside. The archivist ran towards the cave as fast as they could. As they got closer, they saw that there was a deep gorge separating them from the mouth of the cave. The archivist looked back. The spiders were in pursuit, but it was something off in the distance that caught their attention. The Coast Guard ship. Someone had heard their message and was coming to save them. They couldn't go back though. There were too many of the spider trains between them and the coast. They'd have to go in the cave and hope to lose them inside. Without thinking about it, they leapt through the air hoping their momentum would carry them across. The archivists soared through the air. They were going to do it. They would make it across. But no, gravity won out, and the archivist began to fall before reaching the other side. They reached out in desperation and caught the ledge. They began to scramble and pulled themselves up and onto the other side of the gorge. The archivist, panting with exhaustion, stood up to see the dozens of spider trains that had been giving chase, simply watching and waiting on the other side. Were they not going to follow? They'd have to find out later, and ran into the cave. 
The cave was dark, but luckily they had a lighter to provide a tiny flicker of light as they made their way through the tunnels. Soon though, they found that they didn't need the lighter. There was a soft glow coming from a chamber ahead that provided just enough light to see. The archivist entered the chamber and realized where the light was coming from. Eggs. There were tons and tons of the glowing spider train eggs, dozens of them, hundreds, maybe even thousands. And they were all empty. The archivist heard a noise coming from above and looked up to see that the ceiling was moving. There weren't just hundreds of these baby choo-choo Charles. There were hundreds of thousands. Hundreds of thousands just waiting to grow up into full-size demon spider trains. If they ever got off that island, well, who knew how bad it could get? The archivist knew what they had to do. They had to make sure that these spider trains never got a chance to get off the island, even if it meant that the archivist wouldn't either. They'd sacrifice themselves, just like their friend had on the bridge. The archivist turned to run out of the cave as the babies began dropping down off the ceiling. Back at the bridge, large spider eggs appeared on the edge of the ruined crossing, and soon, the newly grown offspring of Choo Choo Charles was pulling itself up. It wasn't yet as big as its parent, but even a half-grown Choo Choo Charles was still a threat. As it looked around, it spotted the Coast Guard ship approaching the docks and began to head towards them. The archivist followed the winding path up and around the mountain with more of the spiders in pursuit. There was a radio tower on top, and all they could do was hope that there would be something there that could help them. They reached the tower and began to climb the long ladder to the top. They climbed as fast as they could. The spider train babies would soon be there, and they could climb faster than the archivist could. When the archivist reached the top, they spotted exactly what they needed, a spotlight. The archivist pointed the spotlight towards the dock where they could see the Coast Guard ship pulling in and began to flash it at them. On the ship, the captain commended the communications officer. They had been right. There were people on this island who needed them and were signaling for help. The captain walked out onto the deck of the ship and was about to step off onto the dock when the communications officer came running out. Captain, wait! What was the problem? The communications officer explained that they had noticed something strange about the flashing light. It wasn't just a signal for help. It was Morse code, and the officer had just translated it. The message being signaled to them said, Stay away. Spider Train is here. Spider Train? The captain was confused, but wouldn't be for long, because the newly grown Choo Choo Charles suddenly appeared on the deck of the boat with a crash and attacked the captain. The archivist kept flashing the message from the tower, but stopped when the Coast Guard ship suddenly exploded into flames. That was it. The only way off the island. It was gone. But at least now, the spider trains wouldn't be able to leave either. The archivist then felt the tower starting to lean. The swarm of babies at the bottom had destroyed one of the legs, and the tower began to tip further and further. The archivist clutched to the tower and braced for impact as it broke from its foundation and fell to the ground. The archivist held on for dear life as the radio tower slid down the mountain. It came to a sudden stop and the archivist tumbled off. They stood up and saw that they were back near the dock, the still burning wreckage of the ship floating in the water, small explosions still occasionally going off from within. Out of the fire of the ship emerged the grown Choo Choo Charles. It had the same demonic look on its face that its parent had just before it died, and it was surrounded by hundreds of its smaller brethren. The giant spider train started to move towards the archivist and attacked as its siblings formed a ring around them to watch the battle. The archivist dodged out of the way, but knew that this was a losing game. It would only be a matter of time before this new Choo Choo Charles got them. But then, the archivist noticed something. Any time they got too near the babies, the larger one would back off. The archivist realized that it was because the bigger one was being careful around its smaller siblings. It didn't want to hurt them. These demonic spider trains actually cared about something each other. And the archivist noticed something else, too. Out in the water, just beyond the wreckage of the ship, was an empty lifeboat bouncing in the waves. The archivist had a plan. They grabbed one of the small ones and clutched it tight to their chest, doing what they could to stop it from scratching with its metal claws. They backed away from the giant spider train towards the dock. When they reached the end of the dock, they spun around like a hammer thrower in the Olympics and tossed the small one as hard as they could. The bigger Choo Choo Charles took the bait and leapt to the side to catch its kin, giving the archivist enough time to jump off the dock and into the water. The archivist pulled themselves up into the lifeboat, grabbed the oars, and started rowing away from the shore as fast as possible. 
As the archivist drifted away from the island, they looked back to see the giant spider train and the many babies watching from the shore. This was far from over.